In this segment, we'll cover gain staging or setting the gain for your inputs on your Zoom F8 or F8n. Now, first of all, what is gain? Gain is amplification. It takes the very weak signal coming out of your microphone and it amplifies that sound signal up to line level so that we can process it and mix it and record it. In this context, gain is gonna be the same as amplification or input level or trim. It goes by all those different names. And the first question a lot of people may ask is, well, can't this be automated? Why do we have to actually kind of fine tune and set the gain specifically for every situation? Well, there are some consumer recorders that have an auto gain feature, but it generally results in audio that sounds pretty horrible. <laughs> and the biggest issues are that auto gain is not intelligent enough to know when it's okay for there to be some silence. It ends up over amplifying the silent passages. So the noise floor shoots way up and it becomes obvious and it sounds horribly unnatural. However, the F8N does have an auto mix feature, which we'll cover in another segment, which is not exactly the same thing, but it is similar. Now, since we don't have an auto gain feature on the F8 or the F8N, and it wouldn't sound great even if we did, how do we set the gain level? Well, there are two main things that you're trying to fine tune and manage when you're setting the gain level. Number one, you want to avoid clipping. When the gain is set too high for the sound source, whether that's a voice or whatever else it is you're recording, if the gain is set too high, the audio will clip. It'll get pushed up against the top, zero dB full scale, and it will distort, and it sounds pretty awful, like this. This is an example of distortion and clipping. Not a great sound. Next up, we're also trying to optimize our signal to noise ratio. That sounds like a really complicated technical thing. It really isn't. All it is is signal is the stuff you're trying to record. Noise is the stuff you're trying not to record. <laughs> so you wanna have as much of the stuff you're trying to record in there and as little of the stuff you're not trying to record. The problem is if you set the gain too low, the stuff you're trying to record and the noise that you're not trying to record will end up being pretty close to the same level. So in post, when you bring it all up together, which you do, then it all sounds muddled. It sounds noisy. It sounds, you have too much of the stuff you don't want and not enough of the stuff you do want. So we also need to get our gain high enough so we can optimize that signal to noise ratio. So generally as a rule of thumb, what we wanna do is we want our peak meters to be hitting somewhere between minus 24, minus 18 dB full scale, Definitely, from my point of view, unless you have very special circumstances, you definitely don't want to exceed minus 12 dB full scale when you're getting things set up. Now, the first question I can hear some of you saying is, wait, that's too soft, it's not loud enough. Well, here's what we need to do. We need to leave enough room for people to laugh or to scream or to suddenly get louder. That can happen a lot of times. This is called headroom, leaving enough space to still capture these louder, often unexpected bits that get louder than we anticipated. So we definitely need to leave some headroom, but doesn't that mean that the audio we're trying to capture is gonna end up closer to the noise floor? Well, not to worry on the Zoom F8N and the Zoom F8, the preamplifiers are extraordinarily clean. These are amazing preamplifiers. They can produce lots of clean gain. And so what that means in practical terms is that writing the gain a little bit lower than you might on a consumer grade recorder is okay because it has extraordinary self noise performance. In other words, this produces so little self noise that going down a little bit isn't going to hurt things. Now on the F8 and the F8N, we have a couple of different views that will allow us to get things set up. Now, what I wanna do here is just run through each of those views, call out where they're available, which cases they're not available, and we'll take it from there. So first of all, here we have a mode, and I'm gonna go ahead and go into the menu. If We come into system, and we go to track knob option. We have three options on the F8N, trim, fader, and mixer. On the F8, we only have two options, trim and mixer. Hopefully in a future firmware update, we'll also get this fader mode. Let me show you the fader mode first. This is actually my favorite way of working. It all depends on the situation and whether or not it works best for what you're doing, but let me show you how it works. In fader mode, each of the knobs for the input channels are faders. And we talked about in the mixing section, the difference between a fader and a trim control. So the fader is what controls how much of that channel gets sent to the stereo mix. Now to set the gain, when we're initially getting things set up, what I wanna do is I can use the menu encoder here, the menu knob, to select the channel that I wanna change the gain setting for. So for example, on channel one, I can punch in here and I can change the gain however I need to. So right now, for example, I have this set to 36 and we're getting nothing. Why are we getting nothing? Well, a couple things. First of all, we need to arm that channel 
And secondly, I'm going to press the PFL button for that channel. We have to come in here and turn phantom power on because we're using a microphone that requires phantom power. Okay, now we're getting a signal. Now what I want to do is I want to come back in here and I want to set the gain so that my peaks are hitting somewhere around minus 18 dB. So probably about plus 30 dB. That's going to do pretty well for me. Now you can see I'm bumping up against above 8 minus 18 periodically, but we're staying well below minus 12. So this is a pretty good level here. That is fader mode. Now let's go take a look at the other modes. Come back into system, track knob option. Let's go to trim mode. Trim mode is the default setting on the Zoom F8. And what this mode allows you to do is that these controls right here control the gain trim. So for example here, again, I'm gonna bump this down. I think somewhere around there is gonna be good. Well, actually even lower. We ended up about minus 30, somewhere around there. So that's good there. Oh, we popped all the way up to minus 12 there. We're just gonna have to keep an eye on that, but this is a pretty close to where we wanna be here. You can see we're staying right around minus 18 dB under most circumstances. Now, what if during my recording, I wanna change the fader level on this? I wanna change how much of microphone number one I'm sending to the stereo mix. Well, what I do is I come in here with the menu knob until the little fader, the linear fader icon there is highlighted. I press in, now I can adjust this. So I can pull back the amount of this particular microphone that's going to the stereo mix. I can even bump it up so I can push more to the stereo mix, but that's how I adjust it. Now, this mode is a mode that I think a lot of people that have used the F8 are used to working with. From my point of view, this made it kind of difficult to mix in real time. So if I'm actually trying to manage a recording where I have three microphones being input at one time, it's a panel discussion, say. If I've got to switch back and forth like this to get the different faders, I'm not going to be able to keep up. Those people are going to keep on talking and I'm not going to be able to really dynamically adjust their levels. So this is not a great mode for that. What this mode is good for is, you know, when you're getting set up, it's very simple to just grab this knob here to set the gain uh, for these inputs. And generally you don't want to be adjusting gain in the middle of a recording, you wanna set that up ahead of time and then adjust the faders while you're recording. So if on the other hand, you realize that you made a, an error before getting set up and during the recording, you're finding that one mic is coming in super, super hot, you may have to adjust the gain a little bit. Just know that it's going to be pretty obvious that you adjusted the gain. <laughs> if suddenly that person gets a lot quieter, it's uh, it can be difficult to manage that in post, can be done, but um, ideally, you shouldn't be adjusting the gain too much during a recording. So there is trim mode. Let's go in and take a look at the last one here. Mixer mode. Okay, mixer mode is uh, an interesting one as well. This was available on the original F8 and the F8N. Um, what you do here is you use the menu encoder to determine what these knobs are controlling at the current time. This is tricky though. So for example, if I have it set here to trim, whenever I adjust this, we are adjusting the gain trim. And that's cool when you're getting set up. Then when it comes time to mix, you can change to the fader mode. Now, these knobs are all adjusting the faders. However, there is a catch. So really the purpose of this mode from my point of view is to get everything set up, get your gain set for all of your microphones before you start recording, then you switch to fader mode. But what you have to do is you, you notice that the knob on the screen is perfectly up and down, perfectly vertical, but on the physical device, of course, it's not. So I have to actually turn this until I get to the vertical position and then readjust it so that it registers. So that's the little tricky part. So if I'm going to be, I'm going to get everything set up on in terms of gain trim first, then I switch to fader mode, I'm gonna to wanna to go through and adjust each of these so that they're matching what's shown on the screen so that when I do grab one of these to adjust a fader, during, a, during an actual recording that it is al already engaged and I'm not actually turning it to get it caught up to what it's showing on the screen. So whatever's shown on the screen is what the actual setting is, even if the knob on the physical device is not there yet. Hope that makes sense. So you have to essentially synchronize them once you move over to fader mode. Now, if I move back over to trim mode, the same thing happens. You'll notice number one is pretty much perfectly vertical, but on there it's at about what, 10 o'clock? So I, to, to adjust that, I have to turn it to 10 o'clock and then it engages. So it's a kind of a tricky mode if you're, if you're going to be switching back and forth a lot, but if you're not gonna be switching back and forth a lot, 
then it's a really good way to actually do your mix, to switch over to fader mode once you start recording um, and then get all of your knobs set up where you want them. So notice again, I have to kind of adjust that to get it synchronized. And now we're ready to start recording and I can do my mix. All right, now one other thing we need to talk about when we're talking about setting gain is also setting the limiters. Now, one of the questions you might ask is, well, it doesn't matter if I set my gain too high because the Zoom F8 and the Zoom F8N have these limiters. And what a limiter does is it prevents it from clipping and distorting, right? So it doesn't matter if I get my gain a little too high, does it? Well, it does to some extent. It doesn't sound great if you're constantly hitting the limiters. And let's demonstrate what I mean here. So first of all, I'm going to come into channel one here and make sure the input limiter is on. It is. I've also set the target level. Now this is um, only an option on the advanced limiter. If I go back to the, the normal limiter, you can see I have a different set of settings. This is what you'll see on the F8. But let's go to the advanced just to keep it very simple. And my target level, I'm gonna say minus six dB full scale. So when the audio comes up above that, it's going to start limiting and pushing it back down so that it doesn't clip. Okay, so we have that on. Now let's go ahead and adjust my trim or my gain to the point where we're pushing really, really hard. Let's give it maybe 60 decibels of gain. So you can see right now, whenever that little yellow light flashes, that means we're hitting the limiter. So let's go ahead and record this so you can hear what it sounds like. Now I'm recording where I'm hitting the limiters constantly, and you can see this is not an amazing sound, especially if we get up really close and really push that limiter hard so it's constantly on, you can see that this is not gonna be an amazing sound. Let's pull that gain back down. So that's an example of pushing the gain way too hard to the point where the limiters are constantly engaged. Let's give a kind of a more practical example. Now, if I do a laugh or a shout or things of that nature, I will just hit the limiter periodically, just every once in a while. And that's really kind of the ideal. That's really what a limiter is for. And it's just to catch those unexpected cases where the sound suddenly gets louder than you anticipated. And it goes something like this. So let's set the gain just a little bit higher so I don't have to scream because my screaming sounds kind of dorky. Let's go ahead and record this. Here's an example of hitting the limiters just every once in a while. So if I laugh, ha 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 ha, you can see it engaged the limiters a little bit there. Or if I raise my voice a fair bit, hey, what's going on over there? You can see it engaged there as well. In those cases, it probably sounds quite a bit more natural than when we were pushing it constantly. Pull that gain back down again to a, again, a more reasonable level. So there's an example of how the limiters work in conjunction with setting up your gain structure or gain staging, or in other words, setting your gain level. So there's still that constant question, well, wait a minute, I did this recording and I put the peaks where you told me to at about minus 18. And when I pull it into post, it's too quiet. What do I do? What did I do wrong? Well, you didn't do anything wrong. You left yourself plenty of headroom. So during the recording, you were safe. You didn't get yourself into a situation where things got too loud and out of control and started clipping and distorting, what you do next is loudness normalization and post. And we have a separate segment that talks about that. Mm -hmm.